Welcome to my channel everyone, I am MJ uh, and I'll be your host in this video and uh, here we are in my library. I was actually doing a little bit of uh, reading today, some rules and stuff that we want to uh, stay on top of for a few games that are coming uh, in the future. Uh, but for today, I have a slightly different update. Um, I've been working on the Starship uh, tiles and I'm happy to say that they're pretty much finished. I did a few of the remaining terrain pieces that I wanted today and now it's just painting, uh, finishing up all the painting details and everything uh, else like that. And what I think I'm going to do is just, Julie and I plan on testing the tiles on Monday. We're going to have a game and uh, we're probably going to test it out with Grim Dark, okay? With one page rules, Grim Dark. But of course, those tiles are great for Stargrave uh, or for Five Parsecs, any of those games like that. Or even for role playing games. If we decide to play role playing games in space, those tiles will be perfect. So uh, that's already on its way to be finished. I'm very happy to say that. Um, but today I have a slightly different project that I want to show. I've been working on uh, this project today as well because it's something uh, that I've been working on for a while and it's some uh, little little figures that I've been making, some uh, scratch built figures and some of them are big, some of them are, are smaller, uh, more, more uh, in scale with 28 millimeter, okay? And these, these figures are all uh, for some fairy armies that we're going to be introducing with our forces of nature themes okay and these are mostly for miniature agnostic games like dragon rampant we already experimented with elementals and i i should have that game up at some point uh there were some problems with that game so i'm going to be uh when i edit um I'll probably be pointing out a lot of things that were wrong in the game and everything because we were experimenting and trying out some new house rules and everything so that we can uh, use Dragon Rampant as a framework for this world that I'm writing up, this elemental uh, world. It, it all has to do with elemental magic. Kind of like Magic the Gathering, but different. It has my own stuff in it as well. It takes inspiration from that. It takes inspiration from dra uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, uh, Forces of the Wild and all that. Races of the Wild is the book actually. So, and then I'm throwing in the fairies. Now, the way that I like to represent a uh, fairy or fey folk, um, in most of my stories, they are part of a what I call the Celestians. And the Celestians are a very varied group. It includes uh, the Seraphs, you know, and, and a myriad of other celestial beings and gods and things like that, and demigods. Um, but then it also includes the Fae or the Fairy. So this gives them a very supernatural kind of, a very supernatural trait to them. And that's how I like to represent them. Now, the Fairy are very diverse themselves. And they are also, they're not all evil, but they're not good either, all right? A lot of them are like kind of in between. Even the good fairies tend to have a bit of a wicked side or a bit of a cruel side. Even though for the most part they may be good, they do good things, uh, they still have a little bit of that wickedness. And then the wicked fairies are just openly dark and they prefer to do harm. Uh, more than good, even if they disguise themselves as being good beings, right? So that's kind of how I represent them. Now, in our armies, the fairy are going to, uh, they're going to be separated into different courts, the way uh, traditionally their mythology uh, kind of separates them into summer court, autumn, uh, you know, winter, spring and fall. And of course, they have power over, their sea, over the seasons, and that's why they're like separated into these different courts. And every army, every force, has the theme of its season, including the magic that it uses. So in order to do that, um, 
I'm using all my miniatures collection. So anything that I have in my miniature collection from Age of Sigmar, uh, like the Sylvaneth from Age of Sigmar, um, and any of the, the Reaper miniatures, anything that I have in the collection that could go into one of these courts, they're going to be used to represent the forces of the Fae for those particular courts. But these armies also need a lot of scratch builds. And that's what brings me to the point of this video, the scratch builds. So why don't we check out some of the strange critters, some of the strange things that we're going to see in these Fae armies, these forces of nature. Here we are on my craft bench. Uh, so why don't I just show a little bit of what I've done. So uh, here's an earth elemental and this is this is very different because it was done uh, with a wire armature, the same way that I would use a wire armature for sculpting. Um, but then I glued, cemented all of this aquarium gravel to it um, in order to make this elemental. And I used like hot glue and uh, there's like a couple of different kinds of glue. And once the creature was formed, I then went back and did like watered down glue to make sure that the stones really stayed in there. And then I added my flocking powder, which is also homemade. And uh, pretty much that's how I made this earth elemental. And I, I, I really like the way this came out, you know. Um, so uh, most of the fae that we will be seeing are earth fae. Their, their element is earth. So these are the kinds of creatures that they would summon and this is a greater elemental okay you're gonna see this in the dragon rampant game now i do have to add a few more details some uh, bugs crawling around and some mushrooms and all that but so that's what i've been doing and then along those lines this uh weird uh bark skinned fairy all right and uh this is a harvester and harvesters are a kind of special character that we are uh, going to be using. And this mo this figure was made, again, with an armature. But I used plastic, regular plastic bag, okay? Like these, uh, these bags right here. Um, I glue a little bit to the wire, wrap it around the wire like a mummy, and then I apply the heat, okay? And that burns the plastic and gives it this whole, like, corrugated, weird, bark-like look, okay? And I got that idea from uh, making the trees out of the pipe cleaners, where you, like, burn the pipe cleaners and you get all this cool uh, texturing. So, this is another very odd fey creature. And you can see her here with some of the Sylvaneth. Because this would be a unit that a harvester commands. And this is for the Court of Autumn. So these are very bizarre fae. And they have like all these tree creatures. And uh, the Sylvaneth lend themselves perfectly to this. So I will probably be painting a bunch of Sylvaneth with some colored leaves. To give them the fall appearance. And there you go. There's a force for the uh, Autumn court of the fairy and they each have different magic and different um reasons for fighting okay now along with the uh fall uh, the autumn court i made these ravens and i just I, I made these yesterday and i used a very different uh technique than i normally would use uh these were made with tin and this is the uh, leftover tin from tin cans. And I just fold the tin. I don't fold it all the way. I keep it kind of like this so it doesn't like uh, break. And then I draw my wing and then cut it out. And then when I open it, I get these nice kind of uh, raven wings. Uh, and they need a little shaping here and there. But basically that's it. And then I take a dark marker and I make all of these uh, feather texturing and all that. Now the bodies are all clay, okay? And these would work great with a little bit of green stuff, 
Um, I actually use Super Sculpey Firm for the bodies, and then I cooked everything, put it in the oven, heated it up, and they're pretty strong. And now I just got to work on the flight stands. And so these are uh, really big ravens. Like these are dire ravens. These are not normal uh, birds. These are actual face spirits. So they give support. The ravens give support to the next unit, which is pretty creepy. And these are just a bunch of scarecrows. And I thought that they would be perfect for a fairy army now these guys don't even have faces in many cases they're just constructs and for these i did the same thing i i took wire i made the armature out of wire and if you haven't seen the way i make my armatures uh i do have a video on how i do these but basically a humanoid armature as if i were sculpting and then i took my plastic and did the whole mummy thing. I wrapped the whole wire with a little bit of glue on one end to kind of hold it, wrapped it all up, and then gave it the fire treatment. And that gave me this really like textured kind of skin that to me is more like rotting rags and whatnot. Okay. So, and I might put some really tiny ravens. I, I think I have a uh, tiny little birds in my plastic bits I can put them on there uh, would look really cool and then of course I got to do the bases and whatever this is going to be a unit of six and yeah they're pretty creepy I, I think so especially when they don't have any faces I think that's even creepier so that right there is the beginning of an autumn court fairy army all right now there's more units coming uh, but that's what I have so far. That's kind of the plan. Now, keep in mind that Julia gonna, is probably going to be playing these. So I'm giving her more, more uh, power by making these for her. Here's a big T-Rex looking thing. And this guy has the ability to, whenever he opens his mouth like that, a cloud of biting insects uh, come out of his mouth. And that's kind of his breath weapon. And I thought that would be a cool thing. Now, this guy was made, again, with a wire armature. And by wrapping up uh, the plastic, I also used uh, pipe cleaners, wrapped up the pipe cleaners around the, uh, the, uh, the wire. I even used tin foil to kind of bulk it up and give it the shape. And then once all that was wrapped in pipe cleaner and plastic, I gave it the flame. And just flamed everything and it had this really nice bark-like texture. Okay, so I'm going to be making more of these and in more bizarre shapes. Now this critter is for the summer court of the fairy. The summer court has a lot of weird tree creatures. And basically it represents the energy of summer. And so we're going to see a lot of that. But today I also want to show let me see if i can there we go this guy here now this is also for the spring and summer courts and this is a moss man and he's not quite finished he's still drying so i don't want to mess with him too much he has this big freaking log branch thing that he uses to hit with and these cool little claws here um once he dries up I give him a spray of uh, lacquer, let him dry, and then uh, it'll look nice and wet, right? Because this is a moss monster, and he doesn't have any eyes. These things don't have eyes. They have vague kind of humanoid shapes. So we're going to make one of these together because these are going to be an important unit. I'm going to make at least six of these. And um, you can see my other armatures. I have quite a few creatures uh, planned for this army and the cool thing about this is that um i don't have to use clay i i can save a lot of money this way and i'm only using uh these weird these materials to make the fig to make my moss man i uh do my humanoid armature okay and i i'll see if i can find the other videos where i talk about armatures in my sculpting videos 
uh, and it's basically the same thing. And I wrap a piece of pipe cleaner around the figure, all right? So I'm going to continue to wrap this. And there's no rhyme or reason. I can't, I'm kind of, I'm trying to bulk certain areas up, okay? We're going to leave a little bit of the wire there. And let me just show you some of the tools because we're going to need some scissors, my big scissors. I also like to use my, my smaller scissors. Um, here is my wire cutter. This becomes very important. And then I have some pliers. And the real thing... Uh, we'll need some tacky glue as well okay so pipe cleaners of course i have my pipe cleaners and i also have my plastic and very important is the heat device now someone asked me can you just use a heat gun and yeah absolutely i i think there would be no problem using a heat gun if you don't want to use the flame uh, I'm using the flame because my heat gun died, unfortunately, so I have to replace it. So basically, I do that. And this actually is giving me other ideas. As I was making this, I realized that this fuzzy stuff could be preserved and I could make some other kinds of creatures. So we'll, we'll see that. There's plenty of time. We'll see that in another video. Okay. Um... And some of these figures I'm going to combine with sculpting or with plastic bits, for example, for the heads. If I want to have a, a creature that has more a more defined head, like, like a horse head, for example, or a goat's head. Uh, again, we're going to explore a lot of different creatures. Uh, not just for fairy or for forces of nature, but for other armies as well. All right. So basically, I took that. Now, we need to leave some of the wire down below. All right. As an anchor. Okay. And so, again, I'm just wrapping this up in the pipe cleaner. So let me just do that. Save some time. So my little red dude is uh, all, all ready for the flame. Uh the flame treatment and i'm just gonna burn them up a little bit and that opens up a lot of spaces in the wire and that's cool we're just gonna keep filling it until we get uh everything covered and do be careful you don't burn yourself um the best way to probably do this is like that okay so he's not finished yet we're doing the skeleton of the moss man basically now this makes some really cool tree folk too uh if you want to make small tree folk or branchlings whatever you want to call them saprolings i don't know dnd calls them a bunch of different things all right so let's look at a little bit of that texture okay all right let's continue all right so this might do it uh basically all i do is when i twirl the areas that i want to be a little bit thicker i wrap more stuff around it so that they're a little thicker let's see what happens when we heat it um sometimes i have to do this several times oh here by the way i kind of made a little branch so it's cool because then all that stuff just melts in there and strengthens the figure all right i think for a skeleton because uh yeah i think this is pretty cool now the branch, I'm going to raise that up a little bit, kind of close it a little bit. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of a curl to that. Make the head, it's a bit of an odd technique. I take some plastic, bundle it up, put it in between this folded pipe cleaner, and then kind of stick the plastic right into that wire that represents the neck. Now, these creatures don't typically have necks. Um, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> but uh, I just twirl this thing. And I could end this in another little branch. Uh, that would be interesting. But basically, okay. And then it's all like discombobulated. That's okay. Because we're going to apply flame. And you'll see how that thing just kind of shapes itself. All right. So now let's apply the flame. 
And again, you can use a heat gun, I think. I think the flame is good because it really condenses the like the heat. Like it really, I don't know, you can aim the heat better. But that's just me. All right, so now I take my pliers because this is hot. Make sure it's not on fire. And just give it a little squeeze. Kind of shape it a little. Do not touch the plastic. Uh, it's going to be very, very hot. Until it cools, do not touch it because you'll get a really nasty burn. Uh, please use all safety procedures whenever doing this kind of stuff. All right. And now we got to add a little bit of flame to the branches. And a little more flame to that plastic there. All right. So ba basically, this gives me a very vague humanoid shape. And we're going to flatten him a little bit. Okay. Very vague humanoid shape. And I cut a wire. It's roughly, it's a little over two inches. Uh, it can be as long as uh, I want, you want it to be. Um, but basically, I take this wire that I left uh without any pipe cleaner and kind of bend it in there. Okay, and that holds the weapon in place. And kind of, the cool thing is you can really shape these guys. Okay, so let's do something like that. Okay, all right. A full length pipe cleaner, and I make sure there's a bulge here uh, where the hand is in place, and I may have to add a little bit more. Uh, that's okay. But we're going to wrap this thing up, and this time we're going to make it like a club. So really wrap the end, okay, and kind of do this. Okay, so it has a nice, like, area there. So let's uh, add the flame. And we see that the wire is exposed, and that's okay. We're going to add more. Okay, add a little bit of plastic. I wrap the plastic around where I want it and then put my little uh, clothespin there to hold it and then kind of melt it uh, through, right? And then I can use that to like wrap the plastic around. There we go. Okay, and that gives it a little slightly different texture. Okay. Now that's going to be a uh, wood and so if a little bit of the wire shows I don't really care. Uh, it actually looks good when you paint it. Uh, but there it has like this little claw thing on the tip. I'm going to actually smash that in a little bit so it'll be more like a big club. Okay. All right. To give the thing some claws, I basically, that other wire that was sticking out, I took two pieces of pipe cleaner, one a little bit larger than the other, and then uh, wrapped that wire around, you know, with my pliers and secured it there, and then just trim the pieces as I see fit. Now, this will give it some nice branchy claws. Okay. And there you go. I think I'll leave it like that. Okay. So there you go. And then I can fix these later. Uh, but now to the most important step. So now my moss man is covered in tacky glue. And I take an old brush. And just brush that glue. Make sure I get that glue where everywhere I want it. Kind of just, all right. So there's that. And some of it is going to stick to the branches. All right. So now pour in that flock and powder. Get it all over. But you can see the, what happens, you know, when you cover it with the uh, flocking powder. It's, it's really cool. There we go. Okay. And it can be reposed a little bit once it's dry.
All right, so here they are, and they're drying uh, very vague kind of humanoid shapes. And once they uh, totally dry, uh, then what I do is I go back and give them a spray of this lacquer that I have. Uh, let that dry fully, and then I'll add little decorations like leaves um you know uh, mushrooms and i have a way that i actually make my mushrooms so that it sticks right to these uh figures okay so these are uh moss men okay and uh they are a force a spirit that is very common in fairy armies at least according to my stories also these guys are reposable i can pose them a little bit because of the wire in there okay so they pose up a little bit and by the way i i use 16 gauge wire 18 gauge is just a little bit thinner than this and i get this at walmart okay so that's my primary armature wire so that's it folks that's all i wanted to show you guys more on this kind of creation uh, coming soon. I have quite a few very bizarre, bizarre creatures coming. All right, folks. Well, that's it. I, I'm sorry. I hope this video is not too long. I hope that it's useful for some of you. Uh, these are great little figurines for like Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Pathfinder, whatever. Even if you're not using them for the Fae as fairy forces, uh, they're just great to have as a creature to throw at your players. But for us, we're going to be using them in our armies, in these very bizarre kind of fey armies that are in many cases uh, themed or uh, together with forces of nature. Okay, that theme is going to be, we're going to be doing some work with that theme uh, sometime in the very near future. Okay, and then Julie and I will be battling out with forces of nature and strange fey creatures. All right, folks, have a great one. We'll talk very soon and uh, be safe out there. All right, have a great one.